Hey, I'm going to be showing you some things that you should do if, if you want to have um, like good performance for Rust, especially if you don't have a good computer or you're new to the game. So the first thing is launch options. Um, so you go to your, your Steam library, you right click Rust, and you go to the launch options. And one very important one is window mode exclusive, and that's very helpful because what it does is it get rid it it gets rid of a delay that is caused by playing any type of game in windowed and uh you can see the, the command right here i'll put it in the description there's also this which i put in my launch options as well honestly don't know if all of them really help um it's kind of undecided at this point but i get i guess it doesn't really hurt to have them at this time so at, after you've done that, you're going to notice that there's uh, no delay whenever you're playing Rust. Another thing that you should really do, it really depends on what CPU you have, is to disable hyper-threading uh, through your BIOS. And that's helpful because Rust only utilizes four cores at a time, and I'll, I'll speak more about that later. Um, so after you've done that, you, go, you can go ahead and open Rust. Right, then this will pop up. Make sure you that you have this right here unticked because this is uh, playing the game in window will will cause the input delay. Okay, now that you're in. Uh, so first, what you're gonna want to do is just tweak some things like the. Um, interface skill to however you like. Uh, you'll definitely want to have the field of view up high. I'm going to turn down this music. So usually um, most people turn down music because it's distracting when, whenever you're in game and sometimes it's very important to hear as much as you can for certain things like a, ra a raid or maybe a person that's nearby. So um, uh, the branding that's usually just takes up space, you turn that off. And then, uh, like, if if you're not worried about quality, like, what I do is I just turn all of these off, except for one, which is sharpen. It doesn't hurt, hurt your performance very much, and it actually makes things easier to see from a distance. So I just turn everything down or off. And especially object quality, like you're you're gonna lag a lot. I mean, Max Gibbs. I mean, you're gonna lag a lot when things are destroyed. If and if you have Gibbs turned up pretty high, it's gonna be hard on your GPU. So after after you're done with that, um, you could, there's gonna be skins. So uh, this this game has uh, about nine hundred skins, probably more. Uh, depending on what time you're watching this at. There's a few couple ways to deal with them. And one of, like first I'll, I'll be going into how to download all of them. So at the workshop at the bottom right here, you can click on that. So then you go to the accepted tab. And then all the skins that are here, this you uh, click on each individual one. Then you just uh, click on the top left button to finish, then click on the next one. And it's going to take you a while this way, but it is a sure way to make sure that you have the skin, maybe one that you specifically want. But the, uh, you can see if you have them downloaded by looking at the circle at the top right of each icon. And th that is a very lengthy process. However, there is a different way. You can go on a server called... Uh, uh, the Hangout, which is a creative server, right here, and so they recently added a plugin that you can use to download uh, all the skins. I believe it only downloads clothing. Um, it might download the the weapon ones as well, but I'm not entirely sure. However, it, it's still very helpful to have because it's a very quick way of downloading all the skins uh, without 
having to do much compared to the first option. And the commands is uh, slash all skin now. You, you will, um, depending on how, how many skins that you do have to download, you might have... Oh, I ran out of memory. That's unfortunate. It's because I'm recording. You might crash several times. So I, I'm just going to go ahead and close out of Rust. Okay, or back here. So the way that you can completely disable skins is by going to settings at the top left, going to downloads, and then uh, you tick only op auto update games in between, and put it at a time you don't usually play at, maybe 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. And that will make it so you don't download any skins, which is very helpful for some for some people because it's going to happen a lot if you haven't manually downloaded all of them or used the plugin on that one server. Okay, so so now there's a few helpful binds that I I know about. So uh, this one right here, bind W to forward and and sprint. What this does is it makes it so you you run all the time whenever you're hitting W, and that's very helpful because. There's pretty much no point not to, to run unless you're trying to be quiet, but that's very situational and you can crouch instead. And it, it just e eases up your muscles for your, your pinky and it's one less thing to worry about. There's also you know, binds mouse 1 to light toggle and attack 2. What this does is it makes it so any underbarrel attachment that you have, it will, it'll make it automatically turn on whenever you're holding the, your right mouse button. And that's helpful for, th for things like flashlights and laser sights because um, having them on will give away your position. There's also this one command not too many people know about. It's physics.step60. And this, what this will do will make you jump slightly higher than the regular weight. Um, and unfortunately, you will need, need to um, put it in every time you start the game. How Unless... There's one thing that you can do. So uh, I'm going to show you how to access your, your Rust files. So you, you click on your local disk, go to program files, go to the bottom, there should be Steam. When you go to the bottom again, there's Steam apps, and there's Common, and then there's Rust. So uh, this CFG right here, this is where your configuration files are stored. And, you, and the client file, that's for all your um, commands. And then the keys, that's where all your binds are. So let's say I add in that one command that I mentioned. So I, I can have it there. However, whenever I open up Rust and, and close it, this is going to be gone. To, to make it so it doesn't do that, what you can do is you go to properties and then you set it to read only so the game cannot change it. Only you can once you untick this again and you click apply then you're done and that one will not be changed at all. So that's that's a very helpful thing to do. Okay, now we're going to get into diagnosing um, your bottleneck. So uh, not everyone has the best computer or computer parts. So for the, the CPU, for the task manager, um, you go to performance and you're at this tab, then you right click this and then you, you go to logical processors. And this will show you the performance for each individual core. If you see one graph that is, that is way high compared to the others, then uh, Rust is using that one a whole lot. And I, I had this issue for me before, specifically because I had an AMD processor. And what I did is I disabled four out of the eight cores. Um, and Rust will only utilize four at a time. So there's no point in me having four more. There was also hyper-threading, which does not help at all. So, so you make sure that you have that disabled. 
then um, your CPU should be should be fine. You may need to get a better one if if your graphs here are still uh, pretty high. What you can like what you should not do if you're buying a new CPU is is get an AMD one because they're f more focused on multi -thread threading. And what uh, what you should try to get is something like an Intel CPU that's way better for uh, single core performance. So that's for the CPU. Then there's the the GPU. Um, so what I use is a program called MSI Afterburner. And so it's you you can open it up and then your uh, your GPU usage will show at it's the seconds from the from the top. It's a graph right here. If it's co consistently at the top, you will need to either lower your settings or you'll need to get a better GPU. Um, if your temperatures are high, like above around 80 or 100, you might want to consider getting new thermal paste or improving your cooling for your computer. Rest uh, th that really depends on what settings you have though, especially th something like Gibbs that just fries your computer. So um, that's about most of the things that I know. Um, hopefully this helps anyone that's trying to get into Rust or someone that's already into Rust. Uh, it's a pretty fun game, but unfortunately there's a lot of things that you have to know beforehand if you want to really enjoy it. So again, I hope this helps you and have fun.